In this video, we're going to take a look at the web GUI configuration of the Cisco 9800 series L series controller. For this day zero configuration, the first thing we want to show off is if you do go into the console interface upon a newer boot of this controller, uh, you will be met with that day zero configuration dialog. At the console interface, you do not want to do anything in these prompts. You don't want to type in yes, you don't want to type in no, you want to just make sure that it is at this prompt so you can proceed with the GUI configuration from here. So once we're at this prompt, we know the controller is booted and we are ready to go to proceed to our next steps. First thing we want to look at is we want to connect our device, in this case my laptop, to the controller. And you can use any of the front interfaces of the controller to plug in. I've just chosen our first uh, 10 gigabit interface on this controller. And I've plugged in a regular patch cable to my PC. And this allows me to wait while the controller is setting up to give me a DHCP address for the uh, 192.168.1. something. Um, this will allow me to connect to the uh, VLAN of 192.168.1.x in the interface on my browser. So in this case I got a 1.3 IP address. Uh, yours might be different when you go and configure that, uh, which allows me and shows me that this controller again is in that default ready state. It is enabled with a DHCP pool and the VLAN one is auto configured because I have not uh, interfered with the console interface in that day zero setup so it gives me an IP address when I plug directly into that controller. Now that I see that I do have an IP address we can proceed to the interface address of the controller which is 192.168.1.1 type that in your browser and it should load and be met with a prompt which we will continue on and from here, we are now met with that login screen. Um, with this screen, uh, you want to find your day zero configuration login credentials, uh, which in our case will be web UI, which was standard. And then your password will be the serial number of your device. So this is going to be specific to your appliance. Nothing that I have uh, to share with you here. Let me type that in now. If all goes well, we should log into the interface. So again, username is web UI. The password is the serial number of your appliance. So it is specific to your box. Once we're in there, we will notice that we are now in the day zero wireless window. And at this configuration level, we can go through those basic prompts to get us up and running with setting up this configuration. Uh, this dialog here in this uh, GUI version does give us some more um, guided steps to add more capabilities than you would see from the command line setup, which is really just there for uh, the device's administration and uh, management interface. Here we do get a couple things we can add uh, that we'll go through right now. So in our deployment mode, we will only have one of these appliances, so I'll keep it as standalone. Our country domain will be the United States, so we'll keep that here as well, and automatically pulled in our time zone as well. If you do have an NTP server, you can add that, so I will do that here. And we'll hit the plus button to add it to make sure it is now assigned into our server credential pool. For our environment, uh, in this design, we'll treat it as if we do not have a AAA server, so we will leave that blank for here. If we want to go through, we can now configure our service port settings. This will be our um, local management interface that we can configure here as well. We can assign DHCP, but I fully recommend that we do it a static IP address so we can automatically um, manage this device uh, through our out-of-band interface here. So we will put that in. Perfect. In this juncture, I'm going to leave our static route settings optional, just to make sure that we're going to just proceed with the most basic configuration setup here. 
And then we do get to the wireless management settings. Uh, this will be important as this will be more of the in-band uh, configuration point as well as where all the traffic is sent between uh, your network and this controller uh, as well. Uh, so the management interface can live here in the service port and your in-band management and overall controller data uh, will be sent through the wireless management settings here. I'm going to pick, in our case, gigabit ethernet port zero, which is the first interface. For our design, I will use VLAN 100. The IP address we can assign here as well. So this will be the IP address for in-band management of our appliance. Now it does not auto assign the uh, subnet mask by default based on the network settings you have, so it is a manual uh, entry as we saw here. And again, an optional setting we are going to leave blank and we're not doing IP version six here. So we're going to leave everything as a um, management network here for our service port in-band management for our uh, network and data path uh, to get our general settings set up. So this point we've configured that the box is standalone, has the right time server, no AAA in our design, but you can fully add that information here, in-band and out-of-band management as well. Proceeding next, we have the ability to go and add wireless network settings. We can add our wireless LANs, or we can just proceed uh, onward if we do not want to configure that from this day zero setup. Uh, we will add them here just to show what we do have available. And we will call this network, uh, let's see, Catalyst. So we'll highlight the fact this is a Catalyst operating system. This will be our Catalyst network uh, for our employees. Uh, security, we can do a couple options here. I'll keep it as basic as personal, and we'll make it nice and simple. Catalyst one, two, three. And we can check our spelling here by the little eyeball. We can add that network and we can see we now have our network for wireless catalyst, the employee type and personal. And we can go back through and add this if it was a guest network and go through and we can establish that as a guest. Choose the guest radio button and the security settings will be a little bit different. Uh, from the employee settings, we will have a uh, pre-shared key here if we need to. Uh, for the guest, we will go through and say, do we want a consent form, uh, web consent, bypass, web authentication? Uh, depending on how you want to assign your guests uh, to be administered, we can do that here as well. So we'll do a web auth for this one. We can review our setting before we proceed and simply hit next to go to the next window. From here, we get to set up what is the type of environment that we're going to have. Is it a typical design, which is gonna be based on client density, low or high? And this will help shape some of the RF settings based on establishing the access point to client density uh, for best radio settings to allow that uh, Cisco magic to do its work here. Uh, RF group name, we will simply call it Catalyst once again. Traffic type, we'll say data and voice. Uh, for our environment, I'm gonna actually move it to a low uh, density. It's just for our lab, so we'll keep it nice and easy. Uh, the virtual IP address, we do wanna keep standard, which is now the new 192 uh, IP address, no longer 1.1.1.1 like it was in the past. So that is taken for uh, us here automatically. We can create new management users if we wanna go above and beyond our settings. So if we wanna do create a new admin user and password or uh, a read only, uh, we can do that here. So I'll, if we wanna bypass the web user ID, username, credential, uh, and serial number, we will go ahead and put our management user in here. And we'll just keep it basic for this tutorial of Cisco 123 for our admin. And notice the default user web user ID will be removed due to security implications. So we know that the default setting will be the web UI and the serial number. So we wanna make sure that uh, we do go ahead and set up our information. And once we do that, we now have the management user that will now replace that default user credential. And it's very handy, it does notice that here as well. Once we proceed to the summary page, we just get a general overview to make sure that everything we are assigning is proper for general settings, wireless settings, and our advanced settings are as we do want them. If we need to go backwards, we can hit previous and we can make any changes we need to. Otherwise, we will hit finish and allow the controller to um, provision these settings into our solution. And then we come back 
we should be able to get into the administration of the appliance, move past the day zero configuration, use our new credentials, and get ready to administer the uh, solution as we need to fine tune it for our environment. I'll hit finish. And as soon as I do that, the device will no longer be accessible from the 192.168.1.1 IP address because we've now assigned it a new IP address from our general settings above. Once we say we are confirmed and committing to this approach, we will hit yes. This website will now time out because that IP address is no longer applicable. And because I did assign uh, my network interface port on the wireless controller to be the new interface, I now have to go through and now connect that to my network setup, put my PC back on our network, and allow me to then go and administer this appliance from that solution. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to go and be actually setting my IP address on my PC to the interface address that we did on that interface for the controller so I can manage it locally. But for this design, I'm going to go through and actually plug it into my network so we can have the right VLAN credentials and get ready for the access points of Joan Iron environment. We have completed the web GUI configuration for day zero setup of our Cisco 9800 wireless controller. So the first thing that we want to go through is verify if those settings did take in our uh, configuration from the console interface. So if we do a show running config, we will notice that as we progress through, our settings have indeed been applied to our controller did not require any reboot to have these settings um, be absorbed automatically from the GUI once we hit finished on that day zero setup. And as we progress through, we can see a couple things. We've assigned our admin name, no problem with that, and our proper privilege has been set up. Uh, we did establish VLAN 100 based on the interface we wanted to run uh, for our solution. And indeed, we found that uh, this interface, which is the first 10 gig interface, we did apply with the 100 VLAN structure. We also have gone through and it automatically disabled uh, the VLAN 1, no IP address. It has added the IP address we enabled for uh, VLAN 100 and properly tagged a route to the default gateway uh, for that network as well. So by just applying a couple of those quick settings within the day zero, day zero configuration of the GUI, uh, seeing those actions happen in the uh, console command line uh, does show that we're in good status here. So from here, we can go into our browser again. and load up our IP address, which was 100.10. Now, when we're going into this interface, we're met with the inability to actually access this IP address. So the way that our setup currently is, is I have the controller plugged into a uh, trunked interface on our uh, uplink switch, and then eventually we'll plug in our access point to that same switch as well uh, on a different VLAN that is all part of this infrastructure. Now, when I was going through our network configuration and setting this controller up on this switch, uh, finding out that we don't have accessibility into this IP address from the browser, I uh, want to go back and look at the port configuration for the interface that we have applied to it. So in this case, we have a switch port trunk allowed VLAN 100, uh, switch port mode trunk and negotiation in auto. Uh, what for our configuration we need to do is set up that interface to have a native VLAN of 100 and that should allow us to access the web interface from there. So because this is again a catalyst operating system running iOS XE, uh, we'll have the full ability to go in and use our um, standard switching configuration uh, information which we can apply to our wireless controller inside of here. Um, one thing that we found from the web GUI interface day zero configuration, uh, there wasn't actually a place to actually go and add your host name uh, to your setup like there was on the command line. So that's why our name for our wireless controller is stuck at WLC. We've not applied our own custom host name uh, for our credentials yet. 
Uh, we'll do that in a little bit. But let's get our configuration running uh, with the interface. So we will do a count T and we'll do the interface of 10 gigabit and port zero, which is the first interface on our config. Uh, for here, we will do a switch port trunk native VLAN 100. We'll apply that there. And now if we do a show run interface from there, we'll now see we've not only just allowed the VLAN 100, we now have applied it to the native VLAN 100, which should now effectively allow us to get into our configuration from here. So now that we've done and tagged it native based on our network setup, we can now go through and proceed to the interface. Now we should have our credentials available because when we did the day zero setup, it had the default credentials. Now when it was saved, we have our new credentials which we can apply to this solution. And we can see we're met with the dashboard of this solution and we're ready to go with our configuration from here.